Good evening, good evening, good evening, family. Welcome one, welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason Together private conference call with Mr. KJ. Hopefully this Miss JW, if she's available, because it is tax season. And friends, as always, before we start our conference call, we just want to wish you a happy belated Palm Sunday, because if it wasn't for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ riding in to Jerusalem yesterday, um, with all the people, this is what's so crazy, all the people calling him Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord, here come the Messiah, and guess what? By the time Thursday get here, the same people that were saying Hosanna is saying crucify him and stuck him up on the cross. So this is a real, real serious foundational week for um, Christians all over the world. And unfortunately, the devil is always busy. As they were having Palm Sunday in Egypt, um, over, listen, Egypt has the largest, one of the largest Christian populations in the Middle East, over 10 million plus. And they had three churches blew up, bombed. You're not hearing that in the U.S. media. So let us bow our heads and go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, God, we thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe here in this country that's causing chaos in all these other countries. Lord, we thank you that it haven't came back and knocked on our doors or if we was in church or if we was at our workplace or on our way to and from work or on our way to drop our children or grandchildren off, Lord, that no suicide bombers have came to thy dwelling. Lord, we thank you because you are protecting us and keeping us even when we sleep, Lord. We don't have nobody creeping into our windows trying to break in. Lord, we don't have no dope addicts trying to steal our car. Lord, we thank you. So that we, don't, we do not count the small things as small these days. So, Lord, we thank you, but, Lord, we ask you, we humble ourselves before you, we lay our face at your feet, spread out with our nose in the carpet, Lord, and ask you, Lord, for mercy, for mercy, for mercy and comfort and compassion for all those that have lost loved ones over while they was worshiping you yesterday on Palm Sunday. God, we are not so ignorant that you did not say specifically in Hebrew, Aramaic, English, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. So, Lord, we thank you that it just hasn't came and knocked on our door recently. But, Lord, outside the United States, Christians have been being persecuted, Lord, by ISIS. Lord, the, the beheadings. Lord, you said that in Revelation, that they will behead you for your faith. Lord, if people don't understand, it's happening right before our eyes. Just because it hasn't knocked on our door, that does not mean it's not happening, Lord, because it's your grace and your mercy that are sustaining us. Lord, but we ask you to utilize these circumstances and these situations because Satan is yet evil, and Lord, he's yet promoting his cause. And Lord, you're still going to have a church here. He cannot, <coughs> and he will not, and so far for 2017 years, have not wiped out your church. The Lord, how he attacks your churches from the ministers and from those within. So, Lord, let us come together as a unity body of Christ and as a family, Lord, and put aside our differences, put aside our issues, Lord, because you're the one that said in your word, love your enemy. And, Lord, if anybody has done anything to us in our past, in our present, Lord, you said forgive them and love our enemies. So, Lord, we thank you for the opportunities, Lord, even when we don't want to forgive, Lord, that we forgive because it's to our best interest. It's to our eternal habitation and being. So, Lord, we ask you to bless those that are patiently waiting for the mailman to come to the door, Lord, because you're being so kind, you're being so compassionate. Lord, we're seeing the shipments moving in a safe place right now so, they can re so we can receive it and they can receive it as well. Lord, we do not want to take no more losses. And, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for whatever time it takes, Lord, to get it to us, to get it to them. Lord, we thank you because, Lord, you will watch over our blessings because you've put us in this position and you've put us in this area right now of our lives to be blessed. Lord, we also bless those in Canada, bless those. Bless our president, Lord. Lord, remove this, foremong this warmongering mentality, Lord, that he has just basically, Lord, changed his position. Lord, and I've also changed my position. Lord, so I will just keep him in our prayers and I yet will look for your prophetic word to fulfill. 
Lord, but rebuke the devil, rebuke all the spiritual wickedness in high places, Lord, and everything that's going on behind the scenes, Lord, expose it and bring it to the forefront. And, Lord, you have been doing that. Well, Lord, we thank you. But, Lord, let us get our own house in order. Lord, because when this chicken come home to roost for all the mess that we're sowing around the world, Lord Jesus, we do not have our we do not have a check that we can cast for all the things that we sold. Lord, remove the fake news and the manipulation, Lord, out of the media. <clears throat> because Lord, if they can de- if we can if they can deceive the president, the most powerful person on the west coast of the United States, if Lord, if they can de- if Satan can deceive him with a fake children video to bomb another country and he doesn't even have proof. Lord, you know he can deceive them to doing other things. So, Lord, we thank you for moving the scales off our eyes and seeing, Lord, the real truth of the matter. Lord, we're looking at it on the news right now that the Christian faith is under threat. So, Lord, strengthen your people. Lord, comfort them and let them know that this is in Jesus' name. Amen. Sam, you need to hear this. While we're in the comforts of our home. Meanwhile, Europe's Muslim population has exploded. During the same period, the number of European Muslims grew by 2.3 million, a combination of much higher birth rates and a wave of immigration from the Middle East. The transition is already altering the basic culture of the continent. Just this week in the UK, the charity National Trust dropped the word Easter from its annual Easter egg hunt, saying it wanted to be inclusive of all religions. These trends are not limited to Europe, by the way. They are global. Worldwide, 31% of the planet is now Christian and 24% is Muslim. Islam is gaining ground fast, though. At the current pace, it will become the world's largest religion in 250 years. Now, that's great news if you believe Western civilization is so sinful that it deserves to be destroyed and replaced by something different. And they and the left believe. But what if you don't believe that? Well, good luck to you. That's it for us tonight. John Hughes. So, family, that's why, see what I'm saying? Jesus said, if they persecuted me, <laughs> they're going to persecute you. And you heard that. These Muslims is growing by leaps and bounds. You know why? Because guess what? They believe in polygamy. They believe in having more than one wife. So figure if a man has, figure if he has four wives, family, and each wife has four kids. How many, how many is that? 4, 8, 12, 16. That one man created 16 Muslims. And guess how many of the other ones are doing? So see what I'm saying? That's how they're exploding on the scene. So you, listen, you have to get prayed up, and you have to keep your mind focused, because guess what? Now we're sending Navy ships over to North Korea. You already know he's a fool. But I just want to encourage you to have your plan and have your plan Um, focused and centered with God leading and God guiding and ordering your steps because the scripture says the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So welcome one, welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason Together private conference call. I would like to make this disclaimer. If there's any county, state, U.S. government, federal agencies or any officials or affiliates to any officials listening to this call, you are not permitted to listen, record, translate, transcribe, or forward any of our conference call information to any agency, and we are requesting that you terminate your call immediately. Why? Because this is a private conference call where we're only discussing what's in the news. That's factual, that you can read, that we love our country, but we just hate some of the decisions that they do in public, so that's why we pray for them. Pray for our leaders, like the Scripture says, that we might have a quiet and peaceable life. So, as well as you do not have our permission to listen, record, translate, transcribe any of our past conference call information, our current conference call information, or our future Come Let Us Reason Together conference call information, nor do you have our permission to forward it to anyone. And we are requesting that you terminate your call immediately, and we will have a moment of silence while you do so. Thank you. Family, our nightly scheduled conference calls are being held Monday evening. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Thursday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our conference call live number, 
3640 with the same pin access code number of 164298 pound. Now, the backdoor number that might assist you in avoiding your cell phone providers thinking that you're listening to conference calls, which is a violation of your cell phone provider's agreement, and they can disconnect your cell phone service without no notice to you. So I would suggest you contact, go through the conference call number through the back door, which is get a pin, 716-293-9620. Again, 716-293-9620. And then you call the 641-715-3640 with the PIN access code number of 164298 pounds. And if you're one of those blessed ones that are just, you just have to take care of your business and you can't grace us with your lovely presence, which we do, which we do understand, please do not hesitate to call the replay number at 641-715-3639 with the same PIN access code number of 164 Two nine eight pounds. The options that you do have: option four, we'll rewind the call; option five, we'll pause the call; and option six, we'll fast forward the call. Let me pause right here. Russia responds. The U.S. side thus has demonstrated a complete reluctance to somehow investigate the facts, and we will further refuse, or we will further have a response if there are any future. Syria missile attack. Family, the, the United Nations haven't even did the investigations yet. So you're being bamboozled. So listen. To receive the information from my, my team, that's probably going to be over here shortly, please send us an email. At K as in Kite, J as in Jack, underscore investments with an S at yahoo.com. That's KJ underscore investments with an S at yahoo.com. Family, we have been tremendous, tremendously, 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 tremendously blessed by IQD calls being on this journey with us. They've been here from day one. I believe June 12th, I believe, 2015 posting all our conference call information, the replay links to our previous calls, because I believe without them, family, it would almost be impossible for all of us in the Dinar community as well as the Iran Riel community to receive all the information that we are being received that we are receiving unselfishly. So I truly thank God for them and I also thank God for my team that if God called me home right now, they are amazing. They're finding the articles to make my position to bring the knowledge, the truthful knowledge to you much, much easier. So I really thank them, and I truly wish God bless you all over them and to protect them and to keep them and to guide them and to strengthen them. So family, but the bottom line is all the articles that we read, is that even though we have spoiled you rotten, that all you have to do is just click on the article and read it for yourself, you still have to do your own research. So, and understand we are in the right position at the right time. Um, I don't know, I mean, listen, I've always said that. When Iran pushed the button, guess what? Even when Dr. Shabidi said when he pushes the button on the Iraqi dinar, it's not going to be no fanfare. It's just going to happen. They're not going to put it on no media. So we already understand from Iran's point of view, they said they was going to do it on the 19th or the 21st. So obviously, guess what? Like I said, from my position, I think they're slightly holding back, or they might have changed the value on their currency, but they're slightly holding back. Reason why? Family, because it's the elections. So I think President Rouhani is real smart. He's holding this as a cursor, and I'm not saying he, they didn't push the button. I'm just saying they don't care less about what America thinks or say. They're going to run their own individual program and monetary policy as they see fit to benefit who? Them. So listen and please understand, I do not know everything, nor does my derivative partner of 20-plus years know everything. But God does. I can't see the future, nor can my, deriv my derivative analyst partner, which she can give us some analysis on some various schematics and some financial 
opportunity that's going for but still, she doesn't know everything to a detail, but God does. <clears throat> the one thing I love about the gift of prophecy, it speaks from the now to the future. Prophecy never speaks from the past. It speaks from the right now today to the future. And so we've already heard the prophecies in the 2014 and um, from Clem Clement, God bless his soul, that God has called him home. He has transitioned over from time to eternity. But listen, 60%, let me see, that prophecy, 60, 60 to 65%, my personal opinion, 60 to 65% of that prophecy from 2014 that he gave has already been fulfilled. One, they coming out talking about impeach. You heard that. You talked about they're going to say, uh, well, a greater than Edward Snowden leak was coming out. Bam, you hear that. See what I'm saying? Um, Streamlining the government, bam, Kushner, his son-in-law, is about to go through the government and shut down everything of wasteful spending. Did that. I mean, that's being in the process in motion. So, family, all you have to do is get your part together, get your plan together. Because we don't hear, in none of those prophecies, like he said, he said he didn't hear no, out of all the war and the destruction and the judgment, he said he didn't see that. He said he seen peace. Um, he's seen a calmness. So that's where we are right now. One moment.
Sorry, family, that was one of those international business associates. Um, so stay grounded. Uh-oh, now we're back to the Susan Rice thing. Here we go. See what I'm saying? So, family, you got to stay grounded because, remember, I went to a prophetic conference and Prophet Neville Johnson from Australia, it was in 2015, in August, he said from this day forward, that's what he was talking about in August, at the prophetic conference, he said from this day forward, the deception in the United States is going to ramp up a 1,000 points, 1,000%. And family, we're seeing it. We go into war based on a video. Didn't we go to war based on weapons of mass destruction that we found out was a lie? Thank you. Didn't we go to war on the same situation in Libya? Thank you. The U.S. never has an exit plan. They want to just push the button. So, family, that's why you just have to pray. You have to pray. God, bring this nation back into your wheel. However you shake, rattle, and roll, bring it back to your wheel. Because, he be, look, the crazy part about our President Trump being concerned about one video of kids dying, they're blowing up children all over the place every day in Somalia. Why is he not concerned about them? Why is he not concerned about the 1.2 million babies that's being aborted in the United States on a yearly basis? Why is he not concerned about the kids that got killed right now, and God bless them and their families in San Bernardino today? Family, it is so much going on. Me personally, I don't think that said, listen, that San Bernardino, this is how I, listen, this is how I perceive how you can tell it's a fake staged shooting. This is my perception, and I've been good so far for the last past three or four years. Listen, when they always have a fake or when they always so-called have a shooting, when it first, listen, family, when it first breaks in the news, listen to that story carefully and watch within 24 hours that story changed 10 times. <clears throat> One, so you mean to tell me, Everybody that's had boots on the ground at the shooting, nobody counted the bodies that was there, and the story keeps changing within 24 hours, one. Two, like the San Bernardino shooting today. Listen, they're showing the school. Look, police sitting out there, sitting there talking and chopping it up with each other like a normal day at the office. They ain't, par they ain't paranoid. Nobody's running around with guns, but it's a shooting. Look, the kids are not w nicely walking out in their buses, that ain't sound like no shooting to me because you know if anything popped off in your country, in your city, or in your, close to your house, you're going to be running rampant and frantically. Everybody's walking calm. Police sitting all on the, standing on the side of their cars, texting. That's how you can tell, family, it's a staged event. Because, look, when you look at that real um, bombing, oh, and the crazy part about, listen, the crazy part about the bombing and in Egypt, they had the videotape in front, of the t uh, in front of the church. The dude had a backpack and set it right on the side of the door before he went into the church, and then he had to go through the metal detector. And guess what? Right when he went through the metal detector, he pushed the button. Boom. And then the crazy part about that is also when they were having the mask on TV, the camera that was, it was going live, man, they showed the whole church blowing up right on TV. So, family, it is some people that don't like democracy. Matter of fact, they hate it. It is some people that hate Christianity. And all this came from, like my pastor said, Sarah, in her decision for her husband, Abraham, to go into Hagar, her handmaiden, to create this whole race. And the scripture said, the younger, the older will serve the younger. So, but stay grounded. Stay on your P's and Q's, family. Really stay on your P's and Q's. Because it, ain't, it ain't getting no better. It's getting worse. So the information being discussed on this call is factual with some conjecture, but the majority of our information is verifiable, and we're not putting no hypotheticals out the air. Um, but you have to understand. The information that we're discussing is verifiable, and it's no fake news. And one thing I love about Iran, I didn't say like, I love about Iran, they don't have no reason to lie to you. And if you do lie on them, they're going to bust you out and say, no, that's a lie. So, and you, I mean, that's just principle, people. That's just being a principled person in a principled country. So thank God for um, 
federal Judge Gorsuch being um, sworn in to take um, Judge Antonio Scalia's position as a constitutionalist that goes by the Constitution and not his emotions. So God is cleaning some stuff up. And guess what? He's the number eighth person. No, 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 four, four. No, he, four, four. No, he's the number ninth person. So if any of them get stuck on something, guess what? He's the man that can either break it or pass it. So thank God. God is cleaning stuff up, people. But it's just crazy that we already started another war or bombing another country, and it's only been 65 days. This dude only been in office 65 days. Why not just bring President Putin to the table, meet with him, meet with Hassan Rouhani, meet with him, meet with President Assad, meet with him. Why don't you even talk to these people first to get to know them instead of listening to the lying government telling you that, they war, that they're evil? So let's get into some news. A lot of people heard that, oh, the um, U.S. can't do no biz- business with Iran. Okay, well, how do, you, how do you explain this article then? Dated April the 10th, 2017, Iran Air receives its first Boeing 777-300ER within a month. The first passenger jet has, ordered, has been ordered from an American plane maker, Boeing, to join Iran's air fleet within a month. Deputy Rhodes and Urban Development Minister Ashkar said, noting that the plane was initially ordered by Turkish Airlines that later canceled the order. After Turkish Airlines canceled the purchase, Boeing suggested it can deliver the plane to Iran sooner than the first official delivery. The deputy minister explained, Iran Air is currently studying the plane specifications and that the airlines will opt to receive the jet if it's compatible with Iran's climatic conditions as well as its technical needs. If the plane's options agree with the needs and preferences of Iran Air, it will be delivered within a month. In case we require additional options in the plane's interior, such as the gallery or the number of seats, the delivery will be postponed by another month, the deputy minister was quoted. After lengthy negotiations following the nuclear deal clinched in 2015, the world powers Boeing secured a contract in December with Iran Air for the sale of 80 planes, the first which transaction, the first such transaction in decades. Did you hear that? In years. And it's the largest transaction, $18 billion. But guess what? Americans can't do business in Iran. Yeah, okay. Look at that article. What does that tell you? Somebody doing business in Iran. <laughs> and it's not those, it's not for kids. So all you got to do is go to the, go to the um, U.S. Treasury, OFAC, Ask them for the general G1 license because you want to do humanitarian projects in Iran, and there you go. I don't, matter of fact, I don't even think it's a fee either. I could be wrong, but like I said, I don't know because I have other associates pursuing it. So and so far, they haven't told me it's a fee. They just want to know all your business, what you doing, what you what you doing over there. You doing you doing you're providing um, Uber for the low income population. Uber shuttle service or a shuttle service, and then you throw in the shuttle service, what do we talk about? Going to those 1,400 hotels back and forth. So you got options. You just got to work your options. So stay grounded and stay focused. Hold on. Again, welcome one, welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason and Get a Private Conference Call. Here's another article. Remember I was telling you the best place to set up or one of the best places to set up um, is on Kish Island, <laughs> and it is literally an island. Listen to this article dated April the 10th, 2017. All, that's so crazy. When you look at the island from Google, the island looks so small, but obviously it's not. Listen to this. All 46 hotels on Kish Island enjoy an inviolable 98% above occupancy rate during the two weeks of March the 20th through April the 2nd, which was the Iranian New Year holidays. 
said the head Kish Hotel and Society. Kish is designated a free trade zone in the Persian Gulf. While considerably smaller than Quashim, it competes with a larger island for tourists. The high capacity rate motivated hotels to offer the highest quality of service, and the guests are completely satisfied. Mr. M also quoted as saying in Kish IR, annual tourism to the island has been growing year by year, and this New Year saw an 8% increase in the number of tourists. It had not been, if it had not been for poor conditions, we believe the growth would have been even closer to 20. So I guess they had bad weather. Listen, more than 907,000 overnight stays were recorded during the holiday period. So that's a million people. According to Safa, as proposed in the past year's hotels on the island did not increase their prices this year and set out to enhance their services, all of which contributed to the rise of occupancy rates. Plans were made well in advance, but this would have not been made possible without the help of the KISH Free Trade Zone Organization. KISH is a 91.5 kilo, square kilometer resort island on the Persian Gulf. Listen, located just south of Hormuzan, Providence. Due to its free trade zone status, it is touted as a consumer paradise and with numerous malls, shopping centers, tourists, and attractions at the moment. Thank you, family. When you got when God got business for you, you got to keep it moving. Okay, um, where were we at? Oh, here we go. Listen, Kish Island is a 91.5 square kilometer resort island on the Persian Gulf, located just south of the Hormuz Providence. Due to its free trade zone status, it is touted as a consumer paradise with numerous malls, shopping centers, tourist attractions, and resort hotels. The island was ranked among the world's Ten most beautiful islands by the listen, listen by the New York Times in 2010. That was when sanctions was on. That was when sanctions were on them seven years ago, and they were one of the ten most beautiful islands. Look, Kish Island attracts some 1.8 million visitors per year, mostly Tehran, Ter, Tehranians hoping to escape the horrendous traffic and pollution of the capital. The aim is to reach. The aim is to reach 2.6 million annually visitors in 2026. One second. Thank you very much. Listen, Kish is attracting some 1.8 million visitors per year, family. So why are we not going? I mean, why are you not going? Because me and my partner is about to take off. Listen, shopping is another big draw. Listen, as Kish was the first and most significant of seven free trade zones. So listen, if that means they're the first of seven free trade zones, family, you know they got some of the biggest banks there. Remember. If you go through Dubai and go get the go through the ICE, the China's largest bank, second largest bank, the ICBC bank, they're the one family that offer that multi currency debit card that holds ten currencies. So if you put all your all your pension and all that on that debit card and the US dollar goes kaput, 
man, and you find out the day before, you see it in the media, that something about to happen in the media, I mean in the financial market, go online and switch all your money over to Chinese yuan or another, one of those other currencies, South Korean dollar or the U.K., you, 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 know, you know, sterling pound. Family, always diversify your portfolio. Do not put all your eggs in this one $20 trillion in debt dollar basket. Even though God said he's going to give um, Kushner um, the plan to take down this debt, but guess what? That ain't, I mean, when? I mean, you want to wait for that? I'm making moves. When God does it, I'll do it. He'll let us know. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, you have to make moves for you. Listen, shopping is another big draw. As Kish was the first and most significant of seven free trade zones set up during the 1990s to attract investments and to help import goods. The free trade zone also wants to double the number of international flights by Kish Air and create a car-free ecological paradise. What do you mean car-free? On the nearby island of Hindarabi, where an airport, port, and hotel have already been built. So you want a car-free island? So what you want us to do, walking around? Uh Uh-uh. Listen, the free trade zone also wants to double the number of international flights by KISH. Okay, I just read that. The country's short-term plan for KISH includes, listen, turning the island into a halal and health tourism hub in the region to rival Dubai, which is only 200 kilometers across the Persian Gulf. Family, so, okay, that's why I said, listen, if you get, if you set up your structure in Dubai, what is 200 kilometers compared to what, miles, let's see, 200 kilometers? That'll let me know how far I am from Dubai. Okay, okay, 200 kilometers per hour. No, let me see, 200 kilometers, hold on, 200 kilometers per mile, one second. You want to go miles, 200 kilometers to miles, okay. Oh, okay. 200 kilometers is 124 miles. So, okay, so if you figure average, if you can do a mile a minute, 124 miles, 60, 60, 120, that's about two hours. So that's about two hours. So probably on the water, going straight across from Kish to Dubai, take your nice yacht. That's about two and a half, three hours, maybe four, which is all good. Throw up your Dubai flag so they won't know you in international water. So you good. So, okay, so 200 kilometers is 124 miles. That's good to know. So. The family also where I really want to go, what me and my partners really want to do is go visit the Holy Tomb. Look, eight-year-old killed in murder-suicide, police suspect shot wife self and two students in murder-suicide. Look at the police. They walking out like it ain't nothing. Why would a suspect shoot his wife self and two students in a murder-suicide? And the kids ain't running. Nobody ain't running. That's how you can know a stage. Unbelievable. So... Stay grounded, family, because it's going to be a lot of deception. Because the script, listen, the scripture did say in the last days, listen, men will die because of fear. <laughs> fear of losing their wife, fear of losing their job, fear of terrorist attacks, just fear. And what does the scripture say? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So how is somebody dying from fear because they're thinking too much about it instead of focusing on God who can keep you from all things? So that's why you stay grounded, you stay focused, because no matter what, God got you in his hand. Just don't jump out of his hand, but he has you in his hand. So don't decide to go bungee jumping or skydiving. See what I'm saying? Now you're thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Now you're playing with situations that, if the parachute don't work, <laughs> guess what? I don't see, I don't do those things like that. Those things that can cost you your life instantly, nah, I'll pass, I'll pass. 
But it's fun. Yeah, it ain't fun for me. Um, especially when you got a calling on your life. So you can you can control your situation. So just stay grounded and stay focused because you're in the right place at the wrong right time. Um, let's get let's see, let's see. I think I had an article on the Iran, Iraqi dinar. Let me see. I think I did. I, I think someone sent it to me. And what it gives, listen, okay, I'm going to set the stage. Dr. Shabibi, that has always ran the Central Bank of Iraq, has always said since 2000, all the way from 2003 up to 2012 when he was in office, listen carefully. I don't care what nobody dinar gurus say about the dinar. I don't care how many conference calls and Dr. Henderson and all these other calls that's just going on. Listen, these calls are falling by the wayside. You know why? Because they don't know. And they're not in touch with our Lord and Savior above that he will give them the knowledge. Listen, Dr. Sh- listen, and the knowledge has been right in front of our face. Dr. Shabibi has always said, oh, by the way, who is Dr. Shabibi, KJ? I'm glad you asked. Dr. Shabibi is the, was the central governor of Iran, of Iraq, that formulated and ran the program of the Central Bank of Iraq from 2003 until he was forced out by Maliki all the way to 2012. But guess what he has always said? Give me political stability, give me security in the region, and I will reinstate the currency. And then he said, listen, I will reinstate it back to what it was before the war, which was $3.22 per U.S. dollar under Saddam Hussein with chaos going on. So just think now they got projects and plans and a little structure, but now they got ISIS running all over the place. Their economy is way better than what it was when, well, if you take the war out, they was way better. But guess what? I just read another article, too, that you know what? The Kurdistan region, which is like, look, listen, Barzani and them over in Kirkuk, in Erbil, Kurdistan region, the northern part of Iraq, guess what? He said, you know what? We're tired of this. And I've been in this Dinar community since December 2010. Today is April 10, 2017. Listen, so I've officially been in it for like seven years. Bazani has said, even though he met with, I mean, even though he met with a body, I think last month, listen, he came out and said now, we're nicely, peacefully moving away from the government. They're, going, they're running their own program. You know why they can? Because guess what? Majority of the oil in Iraq comes from the Kurdistan region, and all the Kurdistan wanted is all the oil companies like Exxon and all them that's extracting the oil. Guess what? They just want their, their costs refunded back to them, and then they want the 17% of what they're giving to to the um, Baghdad government, they just want the 17% from the budget. That ain't asking for much. Since the majority of the oil to run the country is coming out of our area anyway. So now since you don't want to give us that, well, how about this? How about we keep all our oil from our region? Now what? So there we go. And they're said they're breaking off. So family, is that what Dr. Shabibi said? Is that political stability? Heck no. Okay, well, let's go to the next prelude. Let's go to the next um, requirement. Do they have security? Heck no. Well, there you go. What makes a person think that they're going to push the button when they don't have those two? Let's see. Hold on. Uh, Where did I read that at? One second. It totally contradicts what what um, KTSA said on his call, on his conference call. Totally contradicts it. One second. Again, welcome on, welcome on to the Come Let Us Reason and Get the Private Conference Call. Let me get to it. I think I have it in here. One minute. Yeah, Mr. Michael, I'll get you the call notes after the call, or probably during the call. Yeah, George, my brother from another mother, thank you for being patient. I really appreciate you. Well, 
Where is that article? One second. Here we go. Okay, here we go, right here. It's dated April the 8th, 2017. Article, Kurdistan Regional Government, time for a friendly divorce with Baghdad. I mean, this is what they posted. So let me see, because I like reading the direct articles. Hold on. Let me take the title. Let me take the title and then Google it and see if something comes up with that same title. So family, does that sound like political stability? Thank you. If if Kurdistan, let me see, who's the company? Okay, da, 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 Kurdistan, okay. And all of it, see the article is posted under Dinar's Guru. So I'm trying to see where the article is, the link to the article. One second. Because I want to read this. Okay, I'll read it. Family is not for me, but I'll just read it. Uh, let me see. April the 8th, 2017. This came from Newshound Guru Mike. Kurdistan regional government, time for a friendly divorce with Baghdad. I think the Kurds' move is brilliant. They're going to use the leverage they gained by protecting Kirkuk in the northern regions because of Baghdad's inability to engage the enemy and defend them from ISIL. They just landed the territory involved, Article 140. Wait a minute. They just handed the territory involved in Article 140 to the Kurds. Okay, so they were supposed to get that land back because it was the Kurds anyway. So I guess whoever Baghdad gave it back to them, that's an interesting news. But I'm trying that I hear that, but that's from somebody's perspective. I'm trying to read the original article. Where is that in the original article? How about I do this? Instead of going through all these let me go to Iraqi news. Now, that's, the, that's where you go, family. You want to hear about anything in Iraq? This is the Iraqi government website, Iraqi news, iraqinews.com. And all I'm seeing on this website so far is war. <laughs> Woo, blast here, blast here. Mosul governor, look, Mosul governor survives an assassination attempt. Hold on. Let me find this information because I'm good at finding when I find. Hold on. Iraq, home. Politics. Okay, go to politics. Oh, what is he talking about? Now, see, stay in your lane. Matata al Sadr calls for Bashar al-Assad to step down. Dude, you got enough to deal with your own country. How are you trying to tell somebody else what they do in their country? Says Mergerman, okay. No own parties project independent, okay. No party owns project of independent referendum, okay. Kurdistan delegation arrives in Baghdad. Here, okay, okay, now here's official stuff. See what I'm saying? Kurdistan delegation arrives in Baghdad to discuss independent referendum. That means you come into Baghdad to say you want to break off on your own. When was this, this, when was this discussed, dated? April the 5th. Kurdistan delegation arrives in Baghdad to discuss independence referendum. The delegation is set to meet senior Iraqi officials. Baghdad News, a delegation from the Kurdistan region arrived in Baghdad on Wednesday, so that was last, that was last Wednesday, to discuss the referendum and independence of the, with the Iraqi officials. The Kurdish joint delegation from the, Kurdish, the KDP, the Kurdistan Democratic Party, and the Patriotic Union, or the PUK, consists of the chief of staff, of the ministry of the presidency, the head of blah, 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 the delegation is scheduled to meet Fahad, the Iraqi president, and PM Howder al Abadi at the par and the parliament speaker Salam Jabari. 
the Kurdish officials would discuss holding a referendum. In other words, you know how they did the Brexit? That's what they're talking about, holding a, refer- a vote. Do the people want to break away? <laughs> so look, this is a Middle East Brexit, but this is a Middle East Kurdistan, herbal Kurdistan break off. They're holding a referendum. In other words, they're going to have an election and see what the people say. Do they want to break away from the Iraqi government that is chaotic and confused and got corruption and got Mosul burning on fire and got too much going on? Listen, the Kurdistan officials will discuss holding a referendum for Kurdistan region independence with their senior Iraqi officials. The the delegation is also expected to discuss the issue of raising the Kurdistan flag. Look, they got their own flag over the buildings in Kirkuk's Providence. The Kurdish delegation visits to Baghdad follows the meeting with the political bureaus of the two major Kurdistan parties, KDP and the PEK, held a meeting on Sunday, last Sunday, which was chaired by President Brazani for discussions over several topics, including holding a vote. That's what the referendum is. The two parties agreed to form a joint delegation to discuss the independence referendum with Baghdad and agree on the Kurdish party to form a committee which will set the timing and mechanism for the referendum. Family, tell me is that political stability. The country is splitting. (laughs) And guess what? Baghdad, family, do you not know the money that that, that Shabidi raised in the um, Central Bank Governor of Iran, Central Bank Governor of Iraq over like 80 or 100 billion? Do you not know that money was gone? That money's gone? KJ, how's that money gone? Because Dr. Shabidi in 2011 or 2010, when he seen Maliki trying to go after the central bank, he transferred all that money, guess where, over to the corrupt U.S. Federal Reserve in New York. So you already know what happened to the money. When it's chaos in your country and your money over here, Oh, we stealing it. Guess what? All that money gone. So guess what that money was for, family? I don't know why some of you all in the Dinar community forgot. What did you think that money was for? Remember, Dr. Shabibi was always saying, we got enough foreign reserves, in other words, so when we do revalue our currency, we can do one-to-one. Family, they ain't got no currency. They ain't got no money now. So how are they going to revalue the currency when they don't have no money to back it up? Thank you. Ask Frank and all them that. How are they going to back up the currency when all the money in the DFI funds that was deposited in the Federal Reserve of New York is gone? So what are they going to, what are they going to sustain the, the re, re, revaluation with? Thank you. Look, even the oil proceeds go right into the U.S. Federal Reserve account, and guess what? Money's still coming up missing. Who's dumb like that? I wouldn't have set my account up over here. I would have set it up in... Dubai somewhere, or China. I wouldn't have set it up in the U.S. Really? You really trust the U.S. like that, Shabibi? Well, I guess he did because he never thought he was leaving office. But when he did leave office and Shabibi did oust him out, what he should have did was transfer the money. You leave it over here in the Federal Reserve? Dude, you know that's what they do. They takers. They took all that money, plus the oil proceeds. And nobody is challenging them or suing them for nothing. That's unbelievable. That is crazy. (laughs) So listen, and family, that ain't done on a coincidence. That's done on purpose. You know why? Because now you can't get stability. Now you can't revalue your currency. So guess what? You know what that does? That allows the oil companies that we got contracts with over there to continue to get the oil money. That's what we went over there for anyway. Get the oil money. And that's it. Keep the country in chaos while we still spilling this oil that's coming out the ground for free. You see the bigger picture now? I bet you do. This family, Jesus wasn't playing when he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual darkness, against, no, against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's government. You can't get no higher places. Well, you can't get no higher places than that. That's the government. Well, one of the aspects is the government. So, 
So see what I'm saying? It's always good to find the truth. So now we found the truth, and that's official. So now let's go, uh-oh, let's go and see what they're talking about on the currency. Let's go to the business aspect of it. Look, oil hit one month high after U.S. missile strikes in Syria. He said oil, prices is going up. Oil rises in Libyan oil. Oil rises on Libyan supply disruption, likely OPEC output cut extension, okay? Um, OPEC, not OPEC, looking at extending oil output cut by six months, okay? Look, Iraq wants no more long-term World Bank loans. You know why? Because, first of all, the interest rate is too high, and they raping them. Look at that. When is this dated? March the 21st. Iraq wants no more long-term World Bank loans. Baghdad, Iraq has told the World Bank it needs help creating jobs rather than receiving long-term loans, according to the statement of the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Abadi told the delegation from the international organization that his government does not want to buy Iraqis with long-term loans, but rather create work opportunities that helped the population cope with the financial crisis, according to the statement. A body met the delegation as part of a visit to the United States, which began last Sunday, family, and saw him meeting with the U.S. President Donald Trump. The statement quoted the bank's delegation saying it will provide support for Iraq in that aspect. And a body is saying, no, we don't want your debt. Falling world petroleum prices and the continuous war against Islamic militant has thrust Iraqi into financial crisis, prompting the country to reach out to local and foreign lenders. See, they don't, they, so that's what I'm saying. Forget the debt. The interest is too high. They could either get the family. They can join the, I thought, if I'm not mistaken, I thought they was joining the Asia Infrastructure Bank, which this is what they do. They build projects and build countries from within. Listen, in December, the World Bank approved a $1.5 billion loan to Iraq to cope with falling oil prices and emboldened the country in its war against ISIS. The, that sum raised the total financial aid from the organization. Listen to this. Oh, yeah, when you got oil, you can get all the loans you want. But guess what? At a cost. Listen, nearly $3.4 billion. The World Bank had approved two loans worth $1.2 billion and a, you, another loan of $350 million in 2015, one year after ISIS took over nearly one-third of Iraqi territory. So, I mean, guess what? I can bet you what the World Bank wants in exchange. I bet you they want an oil contract. Thank you. They'll make that money back that they gave to Iran. They'll make that money back in a month. But see, that's what that's what they do, family. That they pillage and rape these countries, man. And I mean, man, it's enough money for everybody. Why do we gotta go take, 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 take? Can we go help them build? So see, family, listen. That oh my God, family. Hold on, hold on. I gotta play you something because I'm gonna blow your mind on this one. Thank you, God. It just came back to my mind. Family, remember I was telling you about buying these properties in low-income areas, and listen, putting Section 8 in them? Well, listen, how about I heard a group today on, I'm about to pull it up, on RT News, listen to what this guy says. I'm not saying listen. This is what he does. He said, we go into low or low or low-income areas and buy these properties for pennies and turn around as an investment and let people help us rebuild them and guess what? You know what they're doing, family? What I've been telling you I've been doing for 15 years. They do the Section 8. They go into the urban community, buy these properties for pennies, and then they put the Section 8 in there, and then they sell the project off. Family, that's a ching-ching. And guess what? The dude is in – hold on. Let me get – let me get – he's in Los Angeles. I'm like, let me contact him because I'm going to blow his mind on what I already got going on. And they got the money, too, and they got the resources, family. Y'all can be sitting here playing, wondering where the money coming from. Man, you got, listen, the scripture says, I set before you an open door that no man can close. You just got to go find where the door is. Is it door number one? 
Is it door number two or is it door number three? Hold on one second. Let me find that because that was powerful. I said, these people think I'd just, just be pulling stuff out the air like Santa Claus. <laughs> and I'm sitting there eating everything dude up because I'm just sitting there laughing like, this dude is doing what I've been telling people to do for the longest. Oh, now, here we go with the false wife of Russian programmer suspected of cyber attacks on U.S. shares. Details about stop it. Stop it. Family, if you don't pay your bill right, it's because of Russia. If you run out of gas, it's because of Russia. Everything is because of Russia. And you know why they blame it on Russia, family? Because nobody can verify it. Not all. Hold on. Let me find this. Which, oh, that was on. That was, boom, that was, mm, that was boom. Let me see. What's the show? Bloom and, there you go. Bloom and, but, bloom, boom, but. And family, I want to let you know, avoid that FDA genetic testing. Family, listen, the FDA is going to start asking you, oh, you want to find out, oh, you might want to have kids in the future, right? Okay, this is what you do. Sit, in a, sit on a swab and send that to us, and we will do all the tests and see if you have any preconditions in your DNA line, and we can avoid that. Family, that's the lie. You know what they're doing? they building a profile on you. So when the mark hit, guess what? They know where you at, who you are, everything. Don't, get, don't fall for the okie doke. Please do not fall for the okie doke. FDA approves direct to – look, and the wicked part about it is, listen, they approve direct to consumer genetic, genetic testing. So it's not even managed. So you're dealing with big pharma dealing with directly with you. Unbelievable. Hold on. One second. I mean, I'm right here. I'm just trying to fast forward the video, get to the part specifically. One second. Thank you so much. Hold on. I don't think it's this one. So it'll probably come out later on. But it was powerful today. Oh, here we go. No, here it is. Okay. You need to listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. Don't fall for the okie doke. Hold on. Genetic Research Company, kind of like Ancestry.com, if you've heard of them. 
Uh, it's pretty simple to use. I took one of these tests a few years ago. To, it, it gives you an idea of what you you're doing. Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. It's really easy to use. You sit in a tube, you send them a sample, they extract the DNA from the saliva, and a few weeks later you'll get an email saying your results are in, you log in, and you can view uh, those results. 23andMe, they take these tests one step further, and they don't only provide you with information like trace regions to tell you, hey, you're uh, a certain percentage Native American, a certain percentage Western uh, okay. European. I, yeah, I mean, you, you, find, you find out a lot of really interesting yeah. information about yourself. But Hold the heck up. Family, look at the bottom of the here. U.S. will go ahead and sell high craft aircraft to Nigeria against Boko Haram extremists. I mean, I told you we're per perpetrating war all over the place. Guess what? Who is going to be killed with high craft aircraft in Nigeria? They don't even have roads. See what I'm saying? We are out of control. But when this information comes to you, that's why you need to add it to your player list. Originally planned by Obama administration, Nigeria will purchase up to 12 Embraer A29 Super Tocano aircraft with sophisticated targeting gear for nearly, listen, $600 million. And you know the Nigerian, whoever the king is over there, he's going to use it against his own people, and the U.S. ain't going to say nothing. Listen. Nigerian has been trying to buy A29 since 2015. Unbelievable. Here we go again with the other issue, with Wells Fargo. Look, Wells Fargo should have kept quiet. Wells Fargo Board of Directors blames the bank, senior management. Look, everybody is suing Wells Fargo. So, family, stay grounded and stay focused because – you in the right place here at the right time. But listen, let's go back to the just the genetically modified testing. They also include other interesting genetic information. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, pinpointing diseases that you might be genetically prone to, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, like you mentioned. There are also other kind of weird things, like uh, how much you're likely to weigh, uh, given certain genetic factors. Body mass index. And right, that, that sort of blood. thing, and whether or not your skin is likely to flush, the thing, things like that. Um, in 2013, the FDA said, hey, wait a minute, and told the company, if you're going to be marketing this, you have to be 100% sure of what you're of telling course, your customers, and the consumers need to be able to read this properly, not have any confusion uh, surrounding that. So this week, four years later, the FDA says you can now market this. The consumers, um, they'll be able to identify, tell consumers that they can identify 10 different diseases and conditions. So again, you mentioned Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. Ones too. Yeah, celiac disease, a few other diseases that I can't, I probably can't even pronounce right, <laughs> right, right now. But uh, <laughs> the kit can be purchased on the 23andMe website. It retails for about $99 for the ancestry portion and $199 for that, full, for that full kit, I can tell you, yeah, about the diseases and that sort of thing. It's interesting, and it's something I think a lot of people are going to want to see out of curiosity, possibly be you know, devastated or relieved by the results. Right. But let's talk about people turning into positions at this stop. Okay. Okay. That's we get sick we go to WebMD and all of a sudden you think we're yeah, fine. That's the moral of the story, right? Just because you have a, a, a kid at your house doesn't make you a scientist. Uh, so yeah. You have to buy the FDA stems in this case with uh, 23andMe, but uh, other countries that don't have uh, such strict regulations on this, uh, they've already had a can Canada, the UK, they yeah. have this uh, available to them. The most impactful thing about this, I think, is that if you're a parent and uh, or, or if you want to have a child, you and your, your partner, uh, for a disease like cystic fibrosis, where you just need one gene, you can choose to detect that on your own exactly. without expensive tests if uh, you don't have that. Uh, absolutely. It makes a person able to do this from the comfort of their own home. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Good luck. I'm all about Thank you. Family, so they've been making you instant guinea pig. <laughs> this government, I'm telling you, they are off the charts. They just want everything about you. Why do people can't live in peace and harmony? So let's continue with some more information, because this is ridiculous. I'm not giving them nothing. Matter of fact, if I pass, guys, against God, if I pass, Lord not willing, man, I'm going cremation. I'm not leaving them nothing to nobody. I came in here with all my body parts. I'm leaving with all my body parts. Hold on.
family, this is funny. This is really funny how U.S. businesses, as they say on the surface, cannot do business with Iran, right? But why is this article saying this? April the 10th, 2017, Iran exports to the U.S. exceed $13 million. Iran exported $13.5 million worth of commodities to the U.S. during the first two months of 2017 which stood at $2.1 million for the corresponding period of 2016. Iran's imports from the U.S. fell 72% to $12.2 million during the two-month period, a U.S. Census Department said. The increase in exports owed to the removal of sanctions against Iran over its nuclear program in early 2016, which paved the way for resumption of Iranian shipments to the U.S., mainly handcrafted woven carpets, saffron, pistachios, caviar, as the trade of these commodities was banned under the sanctions. The family, they doing it, and somebody's getting it. $13 million, somebody's getting it. Hold on, let me see one second. Because as I'm talking, I'm, I'm lining up the articles for tonight. So when my um, team comes over and starts sending them out to you, everything will be good. Everything will be ready for them and ready for you. So, oh, yeah, so I guess they're going to probably, this was today, what's today, the 10th? Okay, so they're probably going to post that. They're probably going to post that that video with the, person talking about buying the um, properties later on this night. And then when, by probably Thursday, I, it'll be posted well enough where I can um, have it uploaded to the call and have it uploaded to the forum. But again, welcome one, welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason Together private conference call. My family, I am so, I apologize for those that are on their way to the UK. Um, definitely send me an email, Miss T., or your affiliates, send me an email if you haven't left yet so we can correspond and I can get you that list of questions. So when you touch down, you can touch down running directly to the bank and ask them those questions. And so we can get stuff going on. And matter of fact, listen, I'm also, I believe, I'm going to give you the information to the Shelf Corporation business that have an office over there, and you can go sit down and talk to them and see how you need to structure what you need to structure. And then you can come back and bless us with that vital information. So, okay, so that's that. Let's continue. Again, welcome one, welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason Together private conference call where we're discussing the factual information concerning our blessing. Um, and I'm being honest, I don't know if they pushed the button yet because it's mighty quiet. And listen, it's like the calm before the storm. I know it's the election, but I, we, family, I haven't heard nothing yet. And that's the family. That's a big event for you doing a revaluation of your national currency. And look, and also converting it and call, making everybody that it has already passed call it the Toma. Family, that was a big event. So I don't know why it's quiet over there. But maybe because the U.S. has scared them. Um, well, they knew how the U.S. is. They know we trigger happy, so they're probably keeping it on the DL. But we're going to see. Oh, man, this guy carrying his daughter that passed in Syria from the U.S., chem well, from the chemical weapons. Hold on, let's see. Unbelievable. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta contact the I gotta contact the customs guy because I gotta get some of them smuggled stuff that's coming in to Iran so we can take it out and uh, turn it around and help people that's that's poor and struggling. Listen, dated April the tenth, two thousand seventeen, the High Council of Free Trade Zones has given the nod to the Islamic Republic of Iran Custom Administration to exercise controls, listen, and co collect duties at ports of entry. For free, for free trade zone. Wait a minute. So for free trade zone that is supposed to be tax-free, everything's supposed to be tax-free, you're charging 
That's the, that's the Revolutionary Guard. Remember we read that article that they said they run 80% of the program? That's the Revolutionary Guard. So now in a tax-free zone, you're going to tax everything that's coming in the tax-free zone. The High Council of Free Trade Zones has given the nod, in other words, the okay, to the Israeli, the Iran's Customs Administration to exercise custom controls and collect duties at ports of entry of free trade zones. Custom and Border Protection's equipment were earlier installed only at free trade zones report, with exits up to now, according to the IRICA. The Custom Administration also received a new truck outfitted with X-ray equipment it had ordered for the Shadi port, enabling the speedy scanning of imported, listen, imported containers. Domestic resources were committed for the purchase. There are now 12 X-ray trucks in Iran's custom terminals, three of which, including the one new one, operate in Iran's most active port in the southern province of Hormuzan. An average of about 2,000 containers, listen to this, an average of about 2,000 containers enter the Shahi port every, wow, every day. So, family, you know how, 2,000 containers, I figure each container is 44 feet. Family, that's a lot of stuff coming in Iran. Listen, some 44 million tons of goods worth $11.4 billion were exported from, and nearly 10 billion tons worth, 18.65, were imported to Iran via the Shia port in the last Iranian year, ending March 20, 2017, registering a, listen to this, 44% increase and 12% rise in tonnage and valued respectively year by year. Some 5,000 tons of cargoes were shipped at the port over the period. I need to tap into that stuff that's being seized. That's the stuff that I need to tap into. The food, listen, listen, here we go. Earlier in February, the headquarters to combat smuggling of goods and foreign exchange spokesman, so I'm going to need to contact him. Mr. Kassim announced that high-tech road cameras were being installed, being installed on Iran's main transit routes for recording the weight of commercial vehicles to flight smuggling, to fight smuggling. The cameras are being installed every 20 kilometers by using the information derived from the sensors planted below the road surface, way on motion devices. We can tell whether the vehicle have loaded or unloaded commodities along the way. Wow. The officials believe the system can help eliminate smuggling by commercial vehicles. The new measure have been taken in line with the government's effort to combat the scourge of smuggling that has wreaked havoc in the Iranian economy. According to Mr. Kaju, smuggling accounts for the quarter of Iran's total imports. He said in mid-March that he believed the rate of smuggling was expected to decline 20%. Listen, family, we ain't asking for a lot, but if we can get 1% of this, Listen, to decline 20% to 12 to 13 billion. <laughs> That's how much stuff is coming in there in the last calendar year. Listen, from 15.5 billion two years ago. Statistics on last year's smuggling have yet to be released. This year, from March 2016 to March 2017, listen to this. Some 400, some 400 smuggling rings were disbanded and also quoted. Last year, 14 billion reals, or 3.7 million worth of contraband, were destroyed in Iran. See what I'm saying? How are you destroying $3.7 million worth of goods? Get at the K KJ and the Come Let Us Reason Together um, family group so we can help other countries survive. How are you just destroying $3.7 billion worth of stuff? Man, that's what I'm talking about. Look, look what was, look. Uh, what was what was destroyed? Apparel, uh, food stuff, mobile phones, gold ingots, household appliances. Top of the list of commodities smuggled to Iran. Family, we need that. Listen, Iran. Guess what? Don't destroy it. We'll send a ship to come over there and get it for now, and we'll make a donation. See, that's how you do that. And we'll make a donation to whatever to the to the to the customs fund. How about that? So look. We're taking it off your hands, and you don't have to worry about it. If some more stuff come in there, 
Give me a call. We'll send the ship, and we'll take it off your hands. <laughs> fuel is the main item. Look, fuel is the main item smuggled out of Iran due to its cheap prices compared to that neighboring countries like Turkey or Pakistan. According to the headquarters, to combat smuggling of goods and foreign exchange, per capita consumption contraband stood at 197 last year. Family, I, I thank God for this article. Listen, according to Mr. Abba, another official with the headquarters, every $1 billion worth of contraband smuggled in the country destroys 100,000 jobs. Well, guess what? I need that. <laughs> Family, that's straight cash money. And guess what? If you've got a market, I mean, this country's starving out there. And they destroying it? Somebody ain't thinking. So, family, in the emails, I'm sorry, in the emails, when, you, when, it's, a, when it's an article that I think that is amazing, I always highlight it. I always highlight it. In red, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the title is always in red. And, again, welcome one, welcome all. I'm going for this. I'm definitely going for this. Because guess what? I don't even have to bring that over to the U.S. I can take that and ship it right over to Dubai, have a warehouse in Dubai, break it down, and guess what? Send it to wherever I need it to go. How about that? 200 kilometers is what? 20 km- 200 kilometers is what? 124 miles. So guess what? It'll probably be here. It'll probably be over to the warehouse, to the Dubai port, and you set up a nonprofit or NGO so they don't tax you in a free trade zone in Dubai. See what I'm saying? So they don't tax you. Guess what? You get it there, break it down, and ship it wherever. I mean, you got to learn how to think outside the box because they're destroying it. You hear what they said? They're destroying it. I don't know what they – you know why? Because they can't make money off of it. So guess what? Yes, you can if you partner with KJ and the Come Let Us Reason Together investment group and World Vision International to help those unfortunate countries, all you need to do is put it on a ship, and we'll send the ship over there to pick it up. How about that? You ain't got to do nothing. And guess what they're going to start doing? Now they found, look, because see, nobody's thinking that way. Now they've got an avenue that they can get rid of it? Oh, we're going to call KJ all the time. KJ, yes, we have a whole crate load of brand-new iPhone 7s. I will be over there tomorrow. Because <laughs> iPhone sevens, listen, family, if you sell them for two hundred if you sell them for three hundred dollars, you you'll take over the market. Especially if you're in somewhere like Brazil or another country or India. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. India, one point three billion in population. Come on, family. It, that don't take a rocket scientist. Look, connect with a cell phone guy there. Hey, I'll bring him over there through my nonprofit, and you, you, you'll have him shortly. Bam. Think outside the box, family. What else you going to do? It's a, it's a blessed opportunity. Hold on. Again, again, welcome one. Welcome all to the Come Let Us Reason Together private conference call with Mr. KJ, with Ms. JW, and friends. We are truly blessed to be in this position that we're in. Let me see. Let me see. I'm looking for any government agments to CBI deposits. Okay, let's see what what they didn't went on. What they didn't say. They man, today must be a bomb day. All these articles coming out today, April 10, 2017. Government augments, CBI deposits, according to the latest data released by the Central Bank of Iran for the month ending in February 18th. Government deposits with CBI reached 412 trillion rials or $11 billion. You know why people are putting money in there? Guess why, family? Guess why? Guess why? Because they're paying 20 plus percent just for their money sitting there. They got deposits reached 412 trillion rials or $11 billion and registered a listener a 11.3 increase and 20.7 increase in a monthly and year comparison 
respectfully. This could be the result of the government's plan to move all its accounts from state-owned to private banks to CBI. Um, figures also show that banks were keeping 1.2 quadrillion real for 34.5 billion with the CBI in reserve requirements. The amount grew by 21.1% compared to the previous years, 1,064 trillion real. Family, isn't that str- is that strange that they keep calling it real? Listen. Private banks and non-bank credit institutions accounted for the biggest share of reserve requirements of $972 trillion or $26 billion. These institutions accounted for 75% of the total figure to show growth of 22.3 compared to the previous year. The three commercial state-owned banks experienced 29.7 thirds in the reserve requirements. Family, people are depositing their money and letting it sit there. I keep encouraging you, think outside the box. Think outside the box. What time is it? I got a business call coming up. Okay. I think I might read like three more articles. And what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to also do, family, I'm back on Thursday. I'm, a, um, I'm going to reinstitute the Q&A option. So that's good. But if you have any questions or comments, oh, my fact, yes. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or any questions about the Iranian real or securing the Iranian real, please do not hesitate to send me an email. K as in kite, J as in jack, underscore investments with an S at yahoo.com. That's KJ underscore investments with an S at yahoo.com. And also, if you want to review all the previous conference call information and the replay links to our previous calls, please do not hesitate to go to iqdcalls.com, iqdcalls with an S, dot com. When you kindly get access to the website, click on Call Archives. Kindly scroll down until you see the Mr. KJ and Friends conference call. Then click on that link and go to the right, and you will kindly see the replay link to the, pre, to the conference call, click on the replay link, and through your media devices, iPads, Android, iPhone, tablets, whatever you're listening to, it will automatically start playing the replay of that call. And then you will be updated that you did not miss anything. So you don't have to wait on us or my team to receive the articles. You can listen to the conference call immediately or your associates can listen to it like probably like 10 minutes. It should be posted 10 minutes after we complete the call, hopefully. So you'll be in a good place at the right, at the right time. So just stay grounded and stay focused. Listen, don't understand. I'm not going <laughs> to listen. I'm not going to take off without you. We all in the same car. How am I going to get out the car and just start walking and leave everybody in the car? Wouldn't that be rude? I wouldn't do that. But I'll tell you what, I'm setting some stuff up. So one of these calls, one of these calls, I'm going to pop up and say, hey, hey, people, I'm at the bank. You're going to be like, what? I will have a live conference call if they got a Starbucks over in the U.K. That's all I need. I will call in from the conference call at Starbucks and have the conference call and just blow y'all mind. But if the family that's going over there is going, guess what? They can save me a trip. But I want to go just because I need to go. I need a vacation. My partner needs a vacation. She has been a blessing to her family. Man, can you imagine family being 30-something years old and then all of a sudden you have a family issue that they just thrust five kids on you and you're an investment banker? You used to be single. Now you got five kids of your, your sister's kids you taking care of them. You got to get them in school because they were home trained. And, man, she's, she's a... She needs a vacation. <laughs> but she's up for the task. She's a boss. She do what she do, but that's that's how it is when you when you when you when you love when you, when it's family. But man, that can get burdensome. Especially five kids all at one time that's not yours? What?
So hold on one second. Dated. This came out Sunday. Um, Palm Sunday. Iranian banks, listen, lines of credit, boom, in sanctionary. So family, that's what I keep saying. What, listen, let, let me just ask you a common sense question. Listen to this. How are these Iranian banks issuing lines of credit if their currency don't have a value? Answer me that. Thank you. So obviously, in Iran and in their Iranian banks, they have a major value to their currency. They're not telling you about it. But listen, it would be frivolous. It wouldn't even be worth the paper it's printed on for them to issue lines of credit that you can access and the currency ain't worth nothing, not worth nothing at all. Come on, family. I know you're smarter than that. Iran is smarter than that too. So like I said, unless you're entering or dealing directly with an Iranian bank, which they already said, foreigners can open up bank accounts at Iranian banks. They already said that. But you have to, you got that egg on your face being an um, American citizen. You just got to work other options. If you got loved ones or family members that, you know, yeah, that's how you do that. So let me see. Let's read it. I think it might be the last one. Yeah, and if I find any more, yeah, this might be the last one because I got a business call coming up in three, like five, seven more minutes. Listen, the Ministry of e Economy has published the details of letters of credit and bank guarantees that Iranian banks allocated over the past few years, which marks the progress of these banks after economic sanctions of Iran were lifted. Um, despite the fact that half of President Rouhani's term was spent under heavy sanctions that suspected affected the banking system directly, banks always tried to benefit from, listen, from foreign exchange earnings. And you know, foreign exchange earnings to me is allowing people to put money in your bank and while their money is sitting there, you're paying them 26 or 28%. Because to me, that's the only, from my perspective, how they can gain benefit when people's money is in your bank so then you can lease it out. Listen, has always tried to benefit from foreign exchange earnings and help the country's international trade by opening lines of credit for businessmen and issuing bank guarantees. The process picked up considerably a considerable pace when the sanctions were eased after the implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action as the Iran nuclear deal with world powers is formally called and Iranian banks were declared sanction-free. Did you hear that? Do I need to say it again? And Iranian banks were declared sanction-free. Even though some states are hating, majority of them have been declared sanction-free. According to the ministry's report, here we go again, Bank Melly, Iran, allocated 154 letters of credit worth $42.7 million over a four-period. Family, you hear that? That ain't no pennies. A total of 18 lines of credit worth more than $7.8 million were opened in 2013, but the figure for next year dropped around $2 million. In 2015, lines of credit bounced back to $12.7 million in 2016. With the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, Bank Melly Iran opened 30 lines of credit valued at $6.8 billion 6.8 million during the first six months of the Iranian calendar year, which was from March 21st to September 21st, 2016. The estimates, the figures to have reached 100 lines of credit worth $20 million by March 20th, 2017. Now, you think they plan? You think they opening up all these lines of credit and their currency ain't worth nothing? Come on. First of all, the lines of credit that they're opening my assessment, this is my opinion, they have to be an Iranian real, I believe, or what other currency that they agreed to open the line of credit in. I'm just saying. And that's amazing. So that gives you confidence, family. Listen. 
they're not opening these lines of credit again if the currency is worth one-tenth of a penny like we have it at. I keep informing you, Iran runs their own monetary policy. They can have this. I'm just saying, don't say I said that. I'm just saying as an example. If they want to set their rate in their country at $20 exchange rate to one U.S. dollar, they can. Why? It ain't governed by the central bank. They run their own monetary policy. Sugar foot. So that's what it is. Miss T, I miss you. I miss you. I hope you're up and around and doing God's work in Louisiana with you and all your team. Barbara, I miss you. Um, LP, I miss you up there in Canada. Um, my shuttle service brother in Florida, we on the same team. So family, I'm giving you the knowledge. You got to do your own research. And if you don't do your own research, listen to the call. Think outside the box. But know you're in the right place at the wrong, right time. But listen, that's crazy. All those lines of credit, family, that should tell you right there, the currency is not worth one-tenth of a penny. You know how much, you know what, how large of a line of credit you have to be if we had it at our rate? Please. They have to give us $5 billion just to be at $1 million or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So obviously it's not going down that way. So you need to stay grounded and stay focused. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for their eyes to see and their ears to hear. Lord, protect them, guide them, Lord, and forgive us, Lord, if we have not confessed our sins to you. But, Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace that you said if we come and confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And, God, we thank you because that's how you are. Your whole desire is to come and have fellowship with us to be all up in our business, to bless us, to strengthen us, to be a light in a real wicked and dark and evil world governed by Satan and his uh, minions. <laughs> and, Lord, we thank you for choosing us for this great task to be represent you in a world full of corruption. So, Lord, we ask you to bless those, remove all these false flags, and protect those that are in San Bernardino, um, strengthen them, Lord, because nobody was running from the so-called shooting today. But, Lord, just open up our minds and let us see, remove the scales off our eyes and let us see the truth in any matter, no matter if it hurts us, even in relationships or situations in our marriage. Lord, let us see the truth. And then we cannot be deceived because you said know the truth and the truth will set us free. So, Lord, go before us to lead us, be above us, to cover us, be beneath us to sustain us, be behind us to push us, Lord, and be in us to fill us with your spirit because you said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So, Lord, bless all those that might have financial crisis or situations, Lord, if they have high, if they have sugar diabetes, if their blood pressure is high, make it low, Lord. Jesus, if it's too low, make it even the playing field and strengthen them because, Lord, we are your workmanship, and, Lord, it's up to you to get the blessing to us, and it's up to us to re- have our hands open wide to receive the blessing. So, Lord, we're here to receive the blessing. Lord, we don't count nothing as wasted. We count nothing as wasted because we are in the right place at the right time. And so, Lord, we thank you. And, Lord, we ask you to bless us and give us some heads up on this meeting the special meeting with China and the IMF that's coming up this month. I think it's on the 19th. Lord, because I believe China's going to come out with that gold-backed currency, and it's going to topple the U.S. dollar. So, Lord, give us the insight and give us the wisdom. Give us the knowledge and give us the understanding on it, on how do we make moves and how do we prepare. Because you said in that prophecy that the U.S. is going to lose their credit rating. And the only way they can lose their credit rating, family, is if they default. But no matter what, there's no limits to you, and we don't put no limits on you, God. So however you get the blessing to your people, I decree and declare and release the blessing to your people. Protect Michael, protect um, Wes, protect all those that are on the road, all those traveling, doing your work. And, Lord, above all things, protect those, especially my friend in Michigan that's been patiently waiting on us 
Lord, strengthen him, comfort him, let him know that he's in the right place at the right time, and we haven't went nowhere. Lord, remember Armando, remember Thyla, remember Faith. Lord, remember all those that are waiting on patiently for us. Lord, you said let patience have their perfect work. And, Lord, I want patience to have this perfect work so everybody can get that knock at the door instead of getting that phone call that something has happened or been held up. So, Lord, thank you because we're here. We're fighting for your people. We're waiting for your people. We're um, interceding for your people. And above all things, Lord, we love your people. So let your people know, Lord, that there's no limit, there's no boundaries to whatever they set their mind to do. God bless you, family. I love you with the love of the Lord, and there's nothing you can do about it. Listen. Listen carefully. I don't care if you're atheist. You need to go to church on Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ rising up at 6 a.m. Easter Sunday morning, we would not be here. We would be in that H-E-L-L hockey stick place where the fire's not quenched, and it's burning. But thank God that he rose and he answered his own decree that if you sin, you shall surely die. And thank God that he paid the price for all of us. Listen, no other, no other week is important ever in your life, not even you being born, unless this week was present. Because if he wouldn't have did it 2017 years ago, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. We will still be like that rich man in the book of Luke that's in hell. So stay grounded and stay focused. But remember, never put limits or look at your circumstances and think they're just swallowing you up. Look at the God that you serve, which will minimize your circumstances. God bless you. God keep you. May his perfect love shine upon you and grant you peace. No limits. No boundaries.